So having finished our discussion of serine protease specificity, um, which was the follow-on to our conversation about uh, chymotrypsin's mechanism, we're going to look at uh, two other mechanisms, the mechanism of enolase and the mechanism of HMG-CoA reductase. And we'll go through these quickly to kind of finish up enzyme mechanisms. So enolase is an enzyme in glycolysis, so that's why glycolytic enzyme. And it is, uh, acts as a dimer, okay? So, it's, so the protein is a dimer, and it's shown here in the figure with one chain in yellow and one chain in green. Okay? Now, this figure was created to show you two kind of views of the active site, one with the substrate, which is 2-phosphoglycerate. So it's a phosphorylated 3-carbon compound, and its product, which is shown uh, um, bound to the active site on the right, is phosphoenol pyruvate. Enol pyruvate. Okay, so we've got quaternary structure in this enzyme. Okay, so we have two active sites um, per dimer. Now, the, the active site itself contains. Uh, two divalent metal ions, so two magnesium plus ions. And those are required for catalysis. Now in this figure, only one of the metal ions is shown as a purple ball. We'll see as we zoom in to the active site, there's going to be another one uh, also in the active site. So what's shown on the left is the substrate and one of the magnesium ions in the active site, what's shown on the right is one of the magnesium ions with the product. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on the active site and look at specific residues okay, that uh, help position the substrate and those that participate in catalysis. So first, we're going to talk about posi positioning the substrate. Okay, so um, we're, going to, we're going to look at lysine 396, uh, glutamine 167, and histidine 159. And I'm just going to fix the label of histidine 159 so we can know which one I'm talking about. All right, so these three residues make specific interactions okay, with atoms on the substrate. And so these ones, okay, their role is to stabilize the substrate in the active site. Active site. And so we have an ionic interaction here between the lysine and an oxygen on the, on the uh, substrate. Uh, glutamine 167 is forming a hydrogen bond with the substrate, and histidine 159 is also forming a hydrogen bond with the substrate. All right, so those three help to position the substrate. And so now let's look at these residues over here, which are going to play an active role in catalysis. So let's change colors here. So what we have here is we have arginine-374, okay, that forms a hydrogen bond with the lysine. And what that does is it changes the environment of that lysine so it can act as a general base. So this is a hydrogen bond between the arginine and the lysine. The lysine-345 is going to act as a general base in the catalytic mechanism. Um, so the aspartate and the glutamate residues that are over here um, are going to uh, further promote lysine-345 acting as a general base. Remember, these are negatively charged residues. So we've got negative charges here. We've got negative, <coughs> negative charges here. And remember that lysine is a positively charged residue, uh, as is arginine. So we've got our, our uh, 
<clears throat> we've got our aspartic acid and our glutamic acid residues. You'll notice that those are helping to bind these, these positively charged metal ions, okay? At least one of them. So, so that's right over here, okay? All right, so the lengths of these bonds aren't to scale because we've flattened it into two, uh, into two dimensions, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually look at what the proposed uh, mechanism is, okay? So this mechanism has uh, two main steps. In the first step, lysine 345 is going to act as a general base, which is gonna remove a proton uh, that's at the, the C2 position of the substrate. Okay, so here is our first step right here, where it's acting as a general base. And again, notice that the lysine has to start out deprotonated so that it can become protonated. Okay, so lysine must start out deprotonated so that it can pick up that proton. All right, so now what we have is we have an enolate intermediate, okay? Uh, but that intermediate is negatively charged, okay? Um, and so you'll notice over here, we've got, uh, we've got not just one, but two negative charges uh, on these oxygens here. Okay, so we started out with uh, a carboxyl group and now we have this enolate, okay? So we need to stabilize those negative charges and that's what our magnesium ions are there for, okay? So they stabilize the negative charges on that enolate intermediate. So that's our first step, okay? Uh, um, so the second step, okay, is going to use glutamic acid 211 that's going to act as a general acid. It's going to donate a proton to, um, to the hydroxyl leaving group. So um, here's the group that's going to be leaving, okay? And you'll notice that this right here is our glutamic acid 211, and that's donating the proton okay, and acts as a general acid, right? And then we're going to get the elimination of water and the formation of our product, phospholienol pyruvate. So this is our product right here, okay? Okay, so we've got lysine acting as a general base, We've got glutamic acid 211 acting as a general acid, which I'm gonna just underline it because it's easier to see that way. Um, and we have two magnesium ions stabilizing the negatively charged intermediate right here. So we've got three kind of active participants in this, um, in this mechanism. Okay. okay. So the last mechanism we're gonna look at is HMG-CoA reductase. So um, in this case, okay, um, we're looking at an enzyme that is involved in cholesterol biosynthesis. It's a, so it's an important enzyme, and um, it is the target for some cholesterol-lowering drugs, okay? So there are inhibitors, okay? for cholesterol-lowering drugs. So it's an important enzyme, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And the enzyme that, that, the reaction that it catalyzes is a four-electron reduction of um, HMG-CoA to mevalinate and coenzyme A, okay? so. It uses two NADPH cofactors. Two NADPH is used. Okay. And the reaction 
is a four electron transfer. So each NADPH is going to is going to give up. So each NADPH gives up two electrons. All right. And so this is the reaction overall over here. This is what the enzyme looks like. And you may notice, you may recognize this name, atorvastatin. Again, that's a cholesterol lowering drug. Okay, and so that actually binds to this enzyme, you know, directly. And you'll notice that there are four sites shown here. All right, so let's just do a quick overview of this mechanism, okay? So th this is a four-step reaction, okay? So it's a four-step reaction. So we had, we had our previous enolase mechanism, had two main steps. Here, the HMG-CoA reductase has four steps, right? So the important residues are uh, glutamic acid 83, lysine 267, spartic acid 26, uh, 283, and histidine 381. Okay, so here we've got our, uh, our glutamic acid. <laughs> and so the first thing that's going to happen is that acts as a general acid. Okay, so, so you should be recognizing what this looks like again now. Whereas you get proton donation from this. So now the proton is over here on the substrate. Um, you'll notice that the substrate uh, becomes, during the course of the reaction, uh, there's a hemithioacetal that forms, and that is stabilized by this lysine residue right here. So we've got a glutamic acid acid as a general acid, we have a lysine stabilizing a transition state. Um, and um, as that you know, thioester bond gets reduced, okay, you're getting electrons from the NADPH. So your cofactor gets oxidized. And so the oxidized cofactor leaves the active site. And so th once that leaves, you can get a second NADPH, a second reduced cofactor, um, entering the active site and binding there. And then what you get is you get uh, your histidine uh, donating a proton, so acting as a general acid. This adds um, to the CoA portion of the, of the substrate. So coenzyme A is, is a, a coenzyme molecule that, is, um, that gets attached to a, a, covalently to a lot of things that wind up as substrates. It's, it's, um, it's a commonly used cofactor. Uh, glut so glutamic acid here is going to act as a general base. Now it's going to take back its proton. The, hem the hemithioacetal is going to be broke, is going to break down. The, uh, the glutamic acid is now going to act as a general acid again. So it acts as a general acid, then a general base, then a general acid again. And we get our aldehyde reduced. And that's, that is the final formation of our products that can then leave the active site. All right. So... This enzyme is a tetrameric act enzyme that has four active sites. Um, so I just, if you just look at the previous slide, we've got, it. so you have one in dark blue, one shown in light blue, one shown in dark green, and the other kind in kind of a light green. It makes it harder to, to distinguish. But the easy way to see that there are four active sites are to look at where the atorvastatin is bound. Okay, well, and anyway, all right. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what it looks like when you have uh, an, a 
side chain amino acid side chain acting as a general acid or stabilizing an intermediate. And that's why we went through the details of all of these, um, of all of these mechanisms. But we're also giving you um, the details of some mechanisms to um, give you a picture in your head of the things that have to happen for catalysis to occur. So not all catalysis will happen at the same rate. Some, some enzymes are really, really good at doing all their steps. And, and then sometimes maybe there'll be a mutant version of the enzyme or one that occurs in a different tissue that may go slightly slower through all these steps, okay? And that tells us something, again, about both the function of the molecule um, and how it may play a role in the cell um, and also uh, the differences that small changes in the active site can make. Okay? So, it, so as we play around with enzyme kinetics, uh, remember that when we measure like a catalytic rate constant, so we're gonna talk about KCAT and we're gonna calculate KCAT. When we're talking about that, what we're talking about is how, you know, really the rate at which all these different things can happen. And so if I change this glutamic acid to an aspartic acid, okay, that may affect the rate at which all these things can happen, or it might just affect the ability of the, end, the substrate to bind in the active site, or it may affect both. Okay, so that's it for enzyme mechanisms. I'm gonna stop there. And the next video, uh, we'll go a little bit about kinetics and then talk about regulation.